both the friends came out of that temple. From inside, a woman's voice called out, Kandamara. Kandamara. Called that. Mother is calling me, stay here for a while. I will come here and went inside. Vandiyathevan heard the women's voices as if they were asking questions one after the other, and when Gandhamaran responded by knocking. Then came the sound of the girls laughing uproariously from inside. The thought that they were laughing and mocking him like that made Vandiyathevan feel ashamed and angry. When Kanamaran came out, he took Vandiyathevan's hand and said, Come. Let's come after looking around our mansion. He dragged him away saying that. Kanamaran showed Vandiyathevan the moon enclosures of the Kadampur Palace, dance halls, commercial roads, marble halls, dome towers, stupa caskets and horse stables. The god came in between, Kandamara. When you stopped me at the door of that temple and went back in, there was only laughter and laughter in that temple, what's so special? Are they so happy to see your friend? He asked. They were all happy to see you. Mother and others liked you. But they didn't laugh at you. Then why are you laughing? Isn't there a gentleman? After all these years, he is marrying a new young lady. He has brought her here in Madhupalak. But instead of sending her to that place, he has locked her up in his inn. A nurse who came to see the girl through the balcony described her beauty. Laughter. They are debating whether she is a Sinhalese girl, a Kalinga girl, or a Cherry girl. Don't you know that Palyavatarayar's ancestors came to Tamil Nadu from the Chera country? I have been asked why, and you have told me before. So be it, Kanthamara. How long has it been since Palyavatare married this mysterious beauty, Manga? It will be within two years, since he got married, he will not leave her alone even for a moment. Wherever he goes, he will also take the heroine of his desire with him. There is a bit of banter going on all over the country about this. Come on. If this kind of woman abuse happens to those who have passed a prayer, will it be a little lighter for everyone? The reason is nothing. Shall I tell you the real reason, Kanthamara? Women are always a little jealous. Don't think that I am speaking less of the women of your house. Such is the world of women. The women of your family are dark-skinned and beautiful. She is as blonde as the heroine of the Pervaterayar's wish, Chekhek Seville. That's why they don't like her. That's why. They are making up some other story. Ah! How strange is this? How do you know of her color? Have you seen her, what? Where and how? If only the Reaper knows this, your life is not your own. Kandamara. You know that I am not afraid of all this and I do not do anything unseemly. At Viranarayanapuram, when the entourage of Palyavatarayar passed along the road, I stood by the side of the road watching with the crowd. The elephant, the horse, the palanquin, and the circle were all honors sent by you. Is that true? Yes, we sent it so what? So what? Nothing. I compared the welcome honors you gave to the purveyor and the welcome you gave me was nothing. Gandamaran smiled lightly and said, We paid him the respect due to the ruling officer. We gave you the welcome due to a pure warrior. Once, by the grace of Murugan, you will be the son-in-law of this house and welcome the bridegroom with due respect. He said. Then he said, You came to say something else, the conversation had already changed. Yes, you said that the heroine of Palyavatare's desire was a good red color, how did you know that? He said. Palyavatarayar was coming on the big black moth akaja of the Kadampur mansion like Yamad Harman coming on a buffalo. All I remember was him above. At one time I was thinking that I should become like him, and next thing, a Mudupalak came. Just as I was thinking who might come in the Mudupalak, a curtain of the Palak came from inside. The hand parted a little. A face was visible through the parted screen. The hand and face were of a fair complexion. That's all I saw. From what you have just said, I presume that the girl is the purveyor's desired heroine. 
Vandiyadeva. You are lucky. It is said that no male child has ever laid eyes on that young queen of Pavur. Did you not see her hand and face for a second? Until you saw her, do you have any idea that she might be a beauty born in any country? Kanthamaran asked. I did not think of it at the time. Now that I think of it, it seems that she may have been a Kashmiri woman, or a woman from beyond the seas of Savagam, Kataram, Yavana, Egypt, etc., perhaps even an Arab woman. It is in that country that women are born and veiled until they die first. They will keep it. At that time, from somewhere, the sound of instruments started to be heard. Sally, bear, drum, flute and uduku sounded together. What slogan is this? Vandiyathevan asked. There's going to be a herd of cattle. That's the start of it. Do you want to see the herd? Or do you want to eat early and lie down and sleep? At that time Vandiyathevan remembered that Alvarkadian had mentioned about Kuravakuth. I have never seen a herd, I must see it, he said. When the friends went a few more steps and turned a corner, they saw the stage of Kuravakuthu. The meeting in front of the platform has also started. Surrounded by the palace wall and the ramparts of the fort, the stage was set up in a spacious courtyard with white sand. The stage was decorated with images like chicken, peacock, and swan. The stage was decorated with red rice fried silver fries, yellow millet rice, multicolored flowers, kunri bells etc. Along with the torches, torches were burning to chase away the darkness. But the fragrant incense smoke, together with the smoke of the torches, spread like a mist, dimming the light of the lamps. Instrumentalists sat opposite and to the sides of the stage and played their instruments furiously. The fragrance of the flowers, the fragrance of the flowers, and the sound of the instruments all made Vandiyadeva's head spin. When all the chief guests had arrived, nine cheering women took to the stage. They were dressed in tight clothes suitable for the game, they put on body ornaments, they wore kilambu on their feet, and they put flowers suitable for murugan like kanai, katambam, kanthal, kuranji and chevalry. They stood on the dais, tied to each other by a long flower garland strung with the aforesaid flowers. Some were gracefully carrying beautiful green parrots made of sandalwood and painted in their hands. After saluting the congregation, they began to sing and dance. They sang songs praising Lord Murugan. They sang the heroic deeds of Murugan. They sang the glory of Vet Aravel, who dried up the waters of the ocean, to the Azuras like Surapatman, Gajamugan etc. When many heavenly maidens came on a fast to marry Muruga, they sang the praises of the son of Shiva who came to Tamil Nadu in the earthly world and married the daughter of a mountaineer who was waiting for grain in the forest. They celebrated Velavan's kindness. Such singing and dancing, accompanied by the sound of drums and pipes, enthralled the onlookers. The crowd ended with greetings. The girls walked off the stage. Later, Devaralan and Devarati, a man and a woman, came on the stage to dance. They were dressed in blood-stained clothes. They were lighting garlands of crimson red flowers. They used to apply red saffron on their foreheads. Their mouths were also red and bloody from chewing betel nut. The eyes were red like pumpkin. The game started slowly. They danced separately and joined hands. As time goes by, the game becomes more frenetic. Devarati took up the work that was available on one side of the platform. Devarala tried to snatch it from her hand, Devarati forbade. At the end, Devaralan made a big jump that shook the stage and took a great leap and snatched the work from Devarati's hand. Devarati got down from the stage with a frightened expression. Then, Devaralan stood alone on the platform holding a veal in his hand and dancing wildly. Azuras like Saran fell to ashes. The severed Saran's head sprouted again and again. Velan's ferocity grew more and more. A spark flew from his eye. At last Surapatman fell dead. Devaralan also put down the handiwork. Now all other instruments have stopped. Only the sound of the clothes was heard. 
the priest stood near the platform and beat his clothes furiously. Every atom in Devarala's body trembled. The Sen Adam has come, they said softly to each other in the congregation. After a while, the priest became enraged and looked at the king of Devas and said, Vila. Muriga. Devasnapati. Ganda. Suras Amhara. We must bless the servants. He prayed that. Don't listen. I'm telling you. Ask what you want. Cried the pilgrim. Will it rain? Will the flood increase? Will the country prosper? Will the desired thing come true? Asked the priest. Rain will fall. Floods will rise. The country will prosper. Whatever you wish will come true. But you have not worshipped my mother. Durga is asking for sacrifice. Patharakali is asking for sacrifice, Shandai Kesvari who killed Mahidasura is asking for sacrifice. The ascetic screamed, shaking with rage. What sacrifice? Asked the priest. Will you give it if I ask? Said the fanatic. We will give, we must give. Said the priest. She calls for the blood of the royal clan, she calls for the blood of the millennium king. Cried the madman in a terrible voice. The dignitaries sitting in front of the platform, Sambhavariyar, Malavariyar, etc. looked at each other's faces. Their crimson, maddened eyes spoke ominously. Sambhavariyar nodded at the priest. The priest stopped beating. Devaralan fell on the stage like a dead tree. Devarati ran and picked him up. The congregation broke up in silence, somewhere outside I heard the sound of foxes howling in the distance. Vandiyathevan, who was excited by what he had seen and heard for so long, looked towards the direction where the sound of howling foxes came from. There, a head was seen on the outer wall of the house. It is the head of Alvarkadian. For a moment Vandiyadeva was overcome with a terrible emotion. A maze was created as if the head of Alvarkadian was cut off and kept on that wall. When I opened my eyes and closed my eyes, the head was missing. He was ashamed that he had indulged in such vain paranoia. A variety of other emotions that he had never experienced before also stirred his soul. 